And our co-host today on the program, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. John, Good morning. Bill Kearns, see you at Mr. Health. Good morning. It's been a it's been a, a tough show so far, but I think we're about ready to transition into something fun, right? Well, it's while hot. the music's playing. It's going to be hot, hot, hot out there. Hot, I can hot, tell you hot. That. We're going to the nineties next week, Bill. You may get a little bit more business at the health department than you normally get on a cool day. Well, we hope that people are with the hot days and people are going out there um, doing some camping and doing some picnicking that they keep those mayonnaise based products nice and cool. Drink lots of water. Don't leave the mayo out in the sun. Don't leave the mayo in the sun. (laughs) (laughs) You don't want to get botulism, man. Wouldn't be a good thing. Good for weight loss, not good for you. (laughs) Quick weight loss. Trying to make the weight for the wrestling match. Speaking of the wrestling match, the mayor of the city of Martinsburg is here right now. (laughs) Sometimes transitions just present themselves. Kevin Knowles. Good morning, Nux. Good morning. Good morning. The mayonnaise thing threw me off. I didn't think he was going down that (laughs) You don't often get a mayonnaise introduction. (laughs) You don't see that every day. Yeah. Hey, congratulations to you. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Was uh, was this a race that you were relieved to uh, put behind you, get over uh, with? Yes, very much so. There was a, a lot of negativity on the other part and a lot of misinformation or lack of information that was being put out there that was really turning a lot of people off around me that um, – really affected people around me more than it did myself. But, you know, I don't get my information on Facebook or Twitter. If I have something I want an answer for, I'm going to call up and I'm going to talk to the people that that can give me those answers. And if those people don't answer my calls or don't give me the answer I like, then I'll have something to say. But until then, you know, a lot lot of innuendos, a lot of accusations, a lot of... uh, negative uh, feelings and vibes about myself in the city and I'm just glad that it's over for myself and my family and my uh, the people around me. You know, I get a lot of information sent to me, uh, whether it's a screenshot of something on Facebook or a text that says, did you hear this about this? And then if I don't uh, mention it on the show, I'll get a follow-up that says, why did you not talk about that? And there's a pretty simple answer for this, folks. Uh, Facebook is the Wild West, <laughs> Twitter, yes. Instagram. You can put anything on there that you want, and you most likely will get away with it. We are regulated by the FCC. If I put out false information, especially if I knowingly put out false information, outright lies, we are subject to a lawsuit, and that pertains to us as a company and me individually. And that's why when we're going to discuss something on this show, it's not going to be a rumor that was started on Facebook. It's going to be something that I've been able to verify as fact. And we need to keep our show host in place. Well, at least for some time anyway. So I, <coughs> this yeah. is fundamentally a joyous day. You won. And but before we pivot to the all the happy stuff, what do you think is – this has just been a brutal election cycle. I mean, the – we we had the the general elections or the the, the uh, primaries a month ago and then this it's just been negative negative awful awful what is what's in the water but is this any theories I, you know what I, I wish I, I knew it was in the water because I'd fix it but uh, you know I, I don't know I, I think people uh, tend to uh, the, the more the, the loud negative voice is the loudest one heard not necessarily the loudest one that that, that people listen to. So I think we hear Clearly. we hear more and more of the negative stuff because it's a small group of people that have a, a loud voice. But in reality, that's they don't have a lot. They, in most cases, they don't have a big following, and it's a it's a shame again that you know there there have been some races that uh, the negativity has has won. You know, and uh, I don't have an answer for that. Do you uh, care to discuss some of the things that were said about you that weren't you don't regard as true? You know, um, I want to put that in the past for me. I mean, there's a lot of personal stuff that that, that, that I, at least I took personal and, and a lot of negativity about the, the city. I mean, you know, we, we talk about stormwater all the time. You know, we're, we're more than happy to sit down. And I tell Mike Height this, that we, we'll sit down and we'll lay everything out and tell you why and, and, and what, what can be done to fix that if that's the case. And a lot of times it's a fix from the state or federal level uh, when it comes to that. And a lot of different things. So, I mean, we're always open for discussion. Uh, I've not turned anybody away from a, a phone call. I've not turned anybody away from a meeting. 
uh, not only as mayor but on, as a city councilman and in the other jobs that I have done you know when I when I ran the, the, the county's uh, drug and alcohol stuff that uh, you know I was a 24 7 kind of guy and I still am you know my, my phone's open for people to call and and I answer it when if, if I don't answer right away I get, I get back to you right away well I actually have a theory on this I think that when you're trying to unseat an incumbent that's doing a good job with good results and and you're maybe a little intellectually lazy your only choice is to go negative because what else what else do you have you know um yeah, so i get, I get um, it but i get it but i don't like it you know i think well, of course to me know. to me they're right. bullies and i don't like bullies right you know? the election and this is uh, fascinating to me because every incumbent won cory roman did not run for re-election so his seat was the one open seat but otherwise stephen knipe as an at-large council person dennis etherington uh, kimberly nelson and you, and then of course the others were uncontested, but of those who were contested, everybody was returned, which would indicate to me that of the 6.42% of those who bothered to vote, they were relatively happy with the way things are progressing in Martinsburg. And I would I would like to believe that the ones that didn't vote kind of thought, well, you know, it's, it, it, everything's going to be okay, let's just let it, let it roll. And, and you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, to be able to get the 57% and uh, you know, I, I I give my opponent credit for for getting 43 percent. Uh, I was a little bit uh, shocked about that a little bit, but I could tell those 43 percent that if they want some of those answers that they're looking for in Facebook or Twitter or through that page, call me, call City Hall, ask for the mayor, ask for City Manager Andy Blake, and get the answers. May not be the answer you want to hear, but then after that, you'll have a direct line to what the reason for it is, and then you can argue that point if you care to. But to argue something that you have known nothing about and have no clue about and have not investigated, to me, is is foolish. Mayor Kevin Knowles, our guest here on the program. Bill, you were about to say. Yeah, um, you know, um, I was I was corrected earlier. I said congratulations on your re-election. It wasn't it was on the election and because previously was appointed uh, after the previous mayor passed away. I've known you since you were a councilman and uh, and then onward to being mayor. Um, I've never felt as a public health official I've never felt anything less than total respect. Um, you were right when you're saying you know if you have a question about something you get on the phone and call. And that is your method of doing things. Um, you're going to be a face-to-face -face person. Um, so I don't dwell into the politics area. People that know me understand that. I'm not a political person. But I also hate mudslinging. And I have to ask, you know, the, the turnout, I believe, was, what, 6%? Just over six percent. 850 what, voters. What would it's a shame. I, you're, you're a well-accomplished official. You've done a lot of great things within our city by the help of all the other council persons and, and your leadership that you have within the city of Martinsburg with the police chief. So many accomplishments that have been done. I think that speaks very widely about you. What would you think is the reason of that 6% turnout? Well, you know, I've, I've always said that I, I don't like having this election between a national primary a national general election. I just don't like it. And, you know, it's in our charter. We ha we would have to either change our charter or it has to be mandated by the uh, by the state. But, um, you know, that's not something that I've always been in favor of. Uh, and I think that plays a little bit into a lower turnout, uh, lower, to tur lower turnout. As we saw, this is the lowest turnout that I've seen in the, the 12 years that I've been with city government. And, you know, typically we're looking at uh, anywhere between 12 to 1,500. And, and we're almost half of that, you know, of where we're at uh, in those other elections. So, uh, and, you know, that could be an answer. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, the ins and outs of the legalities of that, and I know that municipalities throughout the state are, are similar to what we do. They have elections in, in different times uh, other than a, a uh, primary or state uh, election and and. The reasonings for it, I, I couldn't tell you. I, I could speculate some things, but uh, I, I couldn't tell you what the reasonings are for it. Would you be in favor of moving the city election to the same day as the primary election? I, I personally would not have a problem with that. 
might have a little bit more difficulty getting workers because I believe many of your election workers also participate as, as county workers. They do. So this isn't just a... There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that come into play to make that happen. I mean, just the tickets alone, we, we'd, we'd be sharing precincts with mm-hmm. with county, different different voting aspects. And, and, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen to, to skew a, an election that if, uh, if that were to happen. So... It's not something that's just changed. It has to be worked on and looked at and evaluated to see what the what ifs. What what if this happens? Because again, you have precincts within our wards that are in county and and city. So splitting those tickets up could be pretty tough to do. Had you lost or had one of the incumbents lost, when would the 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 new uh, office holder have taken? On June 27th, uh, we will be holding a city council meeting to take care of any old business of the old council and mayor. After that, we will conclude that meeting and then swear in the the new council and mayor. So in the run-up to the election, was there the, the various programs and such that, that were in play, were they kind of in neutral or slowed down in anticipation of, of what was coming? The, the ultimate question is, is there... If, a sense of relief now that all the old plans are still on track and yet four years to, to well, keep going. You're, I think you're right. And what you're trying to say is that, you know, we have a team put together, not only with elected officials, but of city administrators that they don't know what's going to happen after, you know, after June 11th. And so you want to make sure that if you're going to go full blast into something, how much you're gonna to have to re-educate people, right? You know, so being that we don't have to re-educate, we have to educate uh, uh, Heidi Heidi Crawford, and, and she's gonna be doing a great job. And uh, I think the city, uh, the people that came out and voted, were very confident that the the team that we have uh, worked very very good together, and uh, we're gonna be moving forward uh, quicker and faster. I mean, we've done a lot of things over the last three to five years that that has moved the city much much forward and 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 you're going to see that happen at the end of this month we're going to hopefully hear back about the raise grant that's going to take something that would normally take us five maybe six years to complete those different phases so if that comes through you know we could see that in the next two or three years you know and that's a that's a huge deal that's a game changer here in the city you know we're always talking about parking and now now we can get more involved in the the, the parking discussions, whether or not a parking garage is something that we need. And if it is, how are we going to work it in? Is it going to be public-private? Is it going to be uh, just just a, a, a public? We, we, we don't know. But we, we're always evaluating those things, and some of those would have to be put on hold because we don't know uh, who, you know, in reality, you didn't know what was going to happen, you know. You could have had a new mayor. You could have had three new council, and uh, here we are. Four, you could have had four new council. Why do you think you won, Kevin? Well, I, I think I've proven that that you know I, I've proven my honesty, my integrity, and, and that I am somebody that you could call and talk up to, and and I could speak to anybody on the street, whether you're you know sweeping the floor or running a business, and uh, you know I think a lot of what was instilled in me by my mother and father still carries on to me today, and and uh, I think that was very important. I mean. If you look back when I was uh, when I was sworn in and appointed, uh, it was my father's birthday. So it, meant, it was a very special time for me uh, to see all all my my whole life flash in front of me, and my father couldn't be here, but yet it just so happened. I I didn't plan that. That just so happened that I get to be sworn in on his birthday, and and uh, I know that uh, the things that that whenever I look at a situation. Uh, and try to make a decision. I always, I always think about my mom and dad. Like, well, how would, not what would they do, but how would they think of me with the decision that I have to make? And you know, uh, that carries me a lot. And I was very fortunate. I had a, I had a brother come down to spend the day with me, which meant meant the world to me. That that I had a piece of my family here, uh, in, in the in the city for for the election. And and then we we spent the day yesterday up on the river. Look at your uh, next term and look four years forward and tell me what you hope will be different about Martinsburg than uh, 2024's Martinsburg. Well, I mean, you're, you're going to see a lot of projects being finished and, uh, 
some that haven't started that'll be finished. I mean, we're looking to re revitalize the sidewalks and the lighting down in the downtown corridor on Queen Street and King Street. Uh, we're looking to do some things with the Apollo, with the with the roundhouse, so I, I could imagine those would grow naturally with that. You're going to have a finished product with a monument with over 400 uh, townhomes or 400 apartments there. And uh, you're going to see more businesses opening up. And, you know, I, I know that there was talk on social media that there was 13 open uh, uh, spots for businesses in, in downtown. Well, you know what, uh, I, I, that's nice. I don't like to hear that if that's the case. But what about the the forty nine percent growth in businesses that we've had since twenty twenty one? I mean, those businesses are still thriving. They just don't happen to be in our downtown quarter at this time. But uh, out of those buildings that are being uh, that are vacant, you have three four uh, businesses that are re renovating them now to open up businesses there. So get the facts and and you know really dig in to see exactly what you're talking about. So when you get these uh, people coming into the city of Martinsburg, and and I, I think you you've done a great job in, in promoting the city every event you're there for it's not just it's not just a salary for you kevin right salary. yeah yeah well, yeah <laughs> it's, it's a small not, salary it's not just a title for you it, no. it's personal it is it and is. um so you're gonna get all these people to come into martin's where are you gonna park them where are you gonna put them well, I mean, that's I, I think I alluded to that earlier. Yeah. That we we are lo always looking at uh, you know parking options, whether it be a garage, public or private, and 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 some of the councilmen I've heard uh, we've spoken recently uh, have kind of changed their mind that maybe this is time to do it. And and the the key is where do you find the money? Mm -hmm. You know, those are those are very expensive. I, th I believe it costs twenty thousand per spot to to build. So that's a that's a that's a big number to to be able to come up with. Uh, to, to make that happen whether you bond it or not I, I i don't know those are those are options and i i was in ocean springs um, uh, ocean springs mississippi uh representing the state of west virginia mayors and and i was walking through their town and what they're doing is like what exactly what i'd like to see is i go down and and and, and it was period it was fit right nice into the city the way it was architecturally they're, they're building a, a a hotel right in the downtown with an attached garage because now they have you know they have the uh, the people are gonna have to pay just like we go to charleston i gotta pay fifteen dollars a night to to park in charleston and, right. and so w once you have something like that has a built-in revenue source i think it works well for everybody mayor of martinsburg kevin knows our guest uh, here on the program uh, how was your relationship with the existing council? I know you and Councilman Etherington weren't the best of friends for a while there. Is uh, is that stress uh, reduced at this time? You have a better relationship. Well, I, you know, I wouldn't. I would say that it had not anything to do with being friendship. We we saw things a little differently here and there, and and you know, I think the I have a high regard for for uh, Councilman Etherington at this point, and 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 I and I would hope and. I think that you know he thinks a little bit different differently of me today. But you know, one thing I can say about uh, all council, including uh, Councilman Etherington, is that they're in it for the city. You know, nobody's in it for themselves, and uh, he has a big heart for the city, and he'll do whatever he thinks is right for the city and, and nobody else. And and that resonates with me because that's how I feel, and and I think that's how, why this team gets along so good to be able to move the city forward uh, real quick, real fast, and and stay cohesive in a way and we don't always it's never uh, very rarely is it a uh, a uh, seven zero vote you know i mean sometimes we have things that we don't don't uh, agree on and that's okay at the end of this uh month you'll be saying goodbye to councilman Corey roman tell me about the uh, this young man who made a mark as uh, as i think a 19 year old when he first ran i will never say goodbye to him you know um he will always be doing something that at least my eyes will be on, and, and I will have contact with him because, you know, I think the world of that young man, I think he came in and, and, and really showed people that uh, that generation has uh, a lot to offer. And and he brought a lot a lot to this city, the city council that, uh, that some of us didn't have. He had a younger perspective. I mean, oh, actually, what he did is he brought the average age down uh, <laughs> on, the, on the city council. That's why I haven't been to co host every now and then. Yes, I mean, I, you know, I mean, at, at, you know, it used to be uh, Jason Baker was the youngest, but now it's not. And now, you know, Jason was in his 20s when he, he came on, and, 
and uh, but he brought a, a different perspective, a good perspective, and 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 I, I can honestly say that he has drawn a total respect from every member of council and, and the, the city administration, and and he will go places. I, he and I have talked on on some of his aspirations as he wants to move forward in life, and and you know, I'm here to support him any way I can, and and I think he'll do a great job no matter where he ends up. Is there a particular type of business that you don't have in the city that you'd like to have in the city? Good question. I think, uh, you know, uh, if I were to have a crystal ball and um, all the money in the world and, and and the land to put it on, you know, I think, you know, whether it be in the city or county, uh, you know, we need some kind of convention center here. We need a, a place where uh, pl people can come and more than three or 400. I mean, we're, we're dominating the state in a lot of areas, we're dominating in in the uh, the, the sports arenas. Uh, we're dominating in in the political aspect of things. I mean, when I was the president of uh, the municipal league, typically, uh, when you have your your big conference, they have it in the place where the uh, where the sitting uh, president is. But we don't have a facility big enough mm -hmm. to accommodate that. And why? I mean, you know, we really should. Be have something either in the plan or in the mix to to make that happen, and I would love to have it in the city. You know, I would love to be able to see that. Good. Have you been to a ball game in Hagerstown? No, not in the new stadium. Well, right? I'll tell you what. That's smack yeah. dab in the city, mm -hmm. and what that has done, uh, just the walkability of their their downtown area. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna be huge. I I, I could see that being affiliated in, in the very near future to one of the teams, but. Uh, but uh, that's you know well, I'm not saying put a ballpark in the middle of a, of town, but you know we've invested. It's been investigated. Well, I know it has. I, I we've ta I've talked to some some individuals that have been on this show about it, and and I I'm a I'm a I'm a baseball guy, so I I mean I always get uh, tagged as the baseball America as we we fixed up uh, the little league and Peel Faulkner and all that. But and you used to coach. I used to, yeah. I still would if I had the time. Yeah, well, but, those days are gone. Hey, we're, I got 20 seconds left. What do you want to say? I want to thank everybody for uh, having faith in me uh, to for another four years. And the ones that, that voted against me, I'm still here for you. Feel free to contact me, and, and hopefully I could change your mind over the next four years. Thank you. Back with the final 50 seconds on the program. That was the city of Martinsburg Mayor Kevin Knowles, who was reelected with roughly 50% of the vote to all the incumbents who ran for re-election won in this last city election.